business, he found time to pray a lot. Right? He wakes up early in the morning. And when his disciples will look for him, they, they find him all the time in a, in a place, quiet place, praying. And the whole day will be very busy for him. And his total ministry was completed in three years, but he found time to play with children. He found time to investigate a big tree. He found time to take a nap on a boat ride. He found time to rest at noon beside a well. And he found time to attend a wedding reception. And so, beloved, if you are saying today that you don't, just don't have time, that is just an excuse that you really don't want to do things in your life. The Bible does not say, if you hurry, you can catch up with God. No, the Bible didn't say that. The Bible says, be still and know. Be still or stop struggling. Be still and know that I am God. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus didn't say, trust me, put your trust in me, and I will help you go through your 18 days, hour work a day. No, he didn't say that. He said, give to me your burdens and I will help you. And so today, I'll give you at least three guidelines from the Bible how we can manage our time wisely. Now, if you are already in a very good mood of managing your time, it's, it's okay. We have a lot of books that helps us how to manage our time. But this is, we're going to look from the Bible how we can use our time to glorify the Lord because our time has been given to us by God. The Bible says our times are in your hands. That means we can dedicate and offer our time to the Lord. First, in order for us to manage our time well, we must know our purpose. We must know our purpose. Paul stated it very well in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Verse 15 says, instead, now when Paul says instead, he was actually continuing his conversation with efficient believers. Because the, the theme is love. The theme is don't, don't be carried away with other teachings. And don't spend your time fighting each other. And Paul says in verse 15, instead, instead of fighting back, instead of doing evil things, he said, instead, speak the truth. In love. And then he went on to say, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. So love is there. And then Paul said, we will grow. Okay? The word grow is there in that verse. And then mature. Grow into a mature believer in Jesus Christ. So, in order for us to really use our time wisely, we have to know our purpose. What is really the purpose of being here on this earth? Is it to work your life out? To earn money? Of course, we need that. But that doesn't mean that that's your main purpose in life. Our main purpose is for us to grow in Christ. And for us to grow in Christ, we have to spend a lot of time with Him, His words, reading His Word, the Bible, and spending time with Him in prayer. Now we smile when we hear the song, Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day. Ah, those are for kids' song, right? But there's a, a strong message, a powerful message in that song. Read your Bible every day, and pray every day. And what happens? And you grow, grow, grow. You see, if you don't read your Bible, if you don't pray every day, don't expect to grow. And so you need to read your Bible. You need to pray every day so you will grow. But the world around us disagrees. People says, they say, that you have to enjoy life right here, right now. Why? Right? Because you only live once, right? Yeah, that's true. And then you have to enjoy all the pleasures of life while you are still alive because when you die, you cannot enjoy it anymore. 
And that's the world stone, and that's what the world wants in this life. But for us to enjoy life to the full, we have to desire to be mature. And this word maturity is one of those things that you cannot hurry. It really, really takes time. You cannot be saved today and, and be a fully mature Christian next year or even next month. It takes time. It's like when you plant a tomato or a, a vegetable in spring. You plant today in spring and you don't expect tomorrow to harvest your tomato. You wait, right? You wait if the tomato will grow and then it will bear fruit. And that will take at least three weeks or a month for you to really harvest and enjoy the fruit. And you don't just say, I'm planting today and I'm going to eat tomorrow. And let's go to ShopRite of the pathway. So maturity takes time. We all know that. And, and Bruce Wilkin, Wilkinson, author of The Prayer of Jabez and The Secrets of the Vine, says this. And there's a lot of truth in what he said. He says, I quote, God doesn't want you to do more for Him. He wants you to be more for Him. See the difference there? Because most of the time we do, we, we do a lot of things. And we thought doing a lot of things for the Lord will help us become mature. No, it will just exhaust you. It will just make you stress. Jesus Christ wants you to be more for Him. And so we're reminded of Mary and Martha when Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to Him and, and basking at the words of Jesus and, and being there in the presence of Jesus. And Martha was so busy in the kitchen and she complained. And Jesus said, Mary has chosen the best part. <coughs> and so if you're doing a lot of things right now and you say, I don't have time for the Lord to read my Bible and to pray, that's not acceptable for the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you to be more for Him. Not do more for Him. He wants you to be close by His side. Our purpose to grow. Once you know your purpose, then you're ready for the second key word, which is priority. What is priority? Priority just means knowing which things are more important compared to the things that are less important. Once you know your purpose, our priorities should emerge. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So Jesus said, Seek first my kingdom. Make me the priority of your life. And if that happens, the rest of the things in your life will just follow. And so before you aim for a lot of things in your life, you need to seek first His kingdom and what, it's, and what will please the Lord in this life. Because when our priorities are not healthy and are clear, we end up attempting more things in this life and we occupy ourselves with a lot of things that are not really important and that causes a lot of stress. And setting priorities is not easy. It's hard. It's really, really hard. We have to make hard choices. We, it's, hard, it's hard to say no to a lot of things that is inviting us to do. And most of the time we need to say no to good things in order to give way to the best things in life. There's always enough time for doing good things. Somebody said there is not enough time for all things, but there's enough time for the most important things. You get that? What are the most, what are the important things in life? Sometimes we we sacrifice the important things with the uh, urgent. And most of the time the urgent things will not really help you. It's just urgent. Most of the time we're afraid that we're going to be late to work because we have not read our Bible. And then when you're afraid that when you get to work, your boss is going to fire you. 
But I believe if you put God first, if you make Jesus your priority, the Lord can change all of those. And so, beloved, there is not enough time for all things, but there is enough time for the most important things. There's always enough time to explore the back roads instead of going through the highway. 